Hello viewers, welcome to our show Style Icon. Today I have with me Mrs. Karnataka, Shubha Rajan Sri Ram. Welcome her with me. Hello. Hi Arfa, it's How such a you? pleasure being here. Thank you. To get on with the interview, um, Shubha, you're a homemaker, but then you got into modeling post your marriage. How did all that happen? See, I've been married for about uh, 13 years now and um, I have a daughter who's almost 11. So uh, I used to be with Jet Airways much before, uh, uh, probably after college. And then I, uh, once I was uh, carrying my child, I said, uh, you know, let me uh, quit the job and be a full-time homemaker. Uh, just to dedicate myself to the house and my kid okay. and stuff. So then uh, years went by and uh, probably when my daughter was about uh, say eight years old, uh, there was something uh, that started setting in, I think which uh, that boredom or what you say, something which every uh, housewife feels. Uh, you know, just doing the chores of the house, cooking, cleaning, you name it. <laughs> I, I've just been a typical housewife. So then I started uh, asking myself, uh, is this all I'm going to be doing all my life? What else do I do that uh, gives me some kind of uh, uh, challenge, some kind of achievement? Uh, but taking a full another full-time job was uh, probably not uh, feasible for me, considering various circumstances. So I said, uh, let me try and do something which uh, keeps me going, which is not a full-time job. Uh, even if it doesn't uh, benefit me monetarily, it should give me uh, some kind of achievement, sense of achievement. So, uh, but in the meanwhile, like most homemakers have, I piled on oodles of weight. <laughs> I had okay. almost uh, not been taking care of myself. Okay. Uh, I would hardly look at myself in the mirror, groom myself and everything. So I said, let me start working on myself first. Before I do anything, mm -hmm. I need to start changing myself for the best. So I started uh, exercising and I started uh, trying to uh, work towards leading a healthier lifestyle, you know, uh, better food and, you know, uh, those kind of things. So then I started slowly shedding weight and this one kind of confidence which started increasing. Uh, so then what happened once, uh, I did this very casual photo shoot with a friend of mine. Okay. Uh, he said, let me click some pictures of you. And at that time, I didn't know anything. I didn't know how to pose. I didn't know, probably know how to uh, look my best. Okay. okay, but there were some casual pictures of me shot. And uh, once these pictures were seen by uh, my crowd, mm -hmm. I got some kind of appreciation. They said, hey, not bad, you look very photogenic and uh, it's, the pictures come out so well. Then another photo shoot happened with another friend and these pictures turned out even better. Oh. And uh, s somewhere then I discovered that I have this passion to pose. Okay. As in, uh, I may not have perfected my art of posing, but uh, I just love the camera. I just uh, love, and they like my expressions uh, in front of the camera. They said, you know, I have the right attitude and I have good expressions that uh, make me appear photogenic. Okay. So then uh, I started uh, clicking more pictures of myself through my friends and everything just to, <laughs> you know, uh, better my art. <laughs> and uh, uh, it so happened that uh, there was a call for uh, a model for a photography workshop. Okay. I said, why not I just go and, uh, you know, do that. It was like a half day workshop where they just wanted people to pose for various photographers mm -hmm. uh, who the master was teaching. So then I went and I, uh, you know, got in as a model there. And I was like clicked by, you know, probably about 10, 15 photographers were there. And that was like probably my first exposure to uh, modeling. Uh -huh. And I believe me, I was shit nervous. <laughs> I was literally dripping, sweating and all that. but. Yes, I went back home and I said, this is what actually I want to do. I just love it. Maybe the uh, limelight, the kind of uh, feel of uh, being a model, you know, mm -hmm. it gave me some kind of a high, right, some right. kind of a dopamine boost, I think. So <laughs> Then on it just started and those pictures also came out well. People were complimenting me. They said, you must try uh, because you have the right attitude. I may not have the probably a typical size zero uh, body for a regular model. But that's where I'm different. Now I'm married, I'm a mother and uh, I still want to model. So what are my options? I said, let me try modeling uh, mainly for saris because I thought my body type suited saris. Mm. You know, so as okay. long as you can emote yeah. and then uh, you still can carry off a sari very well. Yeah. I said, let me do that. So I started uh, taking offers for uh, uh, modeling for sari okay. and uh, Indian wear. So I did a few shoots for uh, 
so many photographers in Bangalore for their promotional material, uh, for their web pages and also I did a lot of shoots that way and mm -hmm. I did shoots for some boutiques and uh, okay. that's how probably my uh, journey as a model started. Okay. Uh, at an age where most of them uh, wouldn't think, think of about doing it. something like that. Yeah. Probably it's my, uh, what do I say, I believed in myself. Uh, probably I didn't think that uh, my weight was such an issue. Uh, I don't know, people loved me the uh, way I was and what I did. Yes, yes. And that boost really kept me going. So in fact, you actually made it work for you. Yeah. Uh, the weight yeah. thing factor, yeah, you said, made it work for I you. I said, uh, let the, the whole thing, the, probably the body type just masks with your attitude. What people see is how you emote, exactly. the expressions in your eye. And uh, yeah, that just takes away the flaws from everything. <laughs> and the fact that you discovered you're an absolute uh, natural with the camera. Yeah. And yeah. that's your calling. Yeah. At, then uh, I realized that maybe that was my calling. Yeah. 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 Something which I never lovely. dreamt of through my uh, college days and, uh, you know, working days. So, so actually boredom works. <laughs> <laughs> and that's for the homemakers the out there. Of a typical homemaker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Yeah. And then Mrs. Karnataka happened. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Then I, this year uh, I heard that there was an audition happening for uh, this pageant called Mrs. India Karnataka, which is uh, the first year of inception. So this uh, pageant is actually uh, under the directorship of uh, Mrs. Pratibha Sonchimat. And uh, I must uh, profusely thank her for uh, giving this uh, platform uh, for all uh, inspiring ladies like me so that we could come and uh, uh, show our talent and, uh, you know, discover ourselves and, uh, you know, so the, the luckily anyway, so I went for the audition and uh, I won the title by God's grace. And uh, so here I am, Mrs. India Karnataka 2016. Super. Uh, I should yeah. congratulate you. Oh, thank you so really. much. Yes. Uh, very proud to have her here basically. So you won a subtitle as well? Yeah, so after that I went on to participate in the Mrs. India contest which is a national level contest and I won the subtitle of uh, Mrs. India Dazzling. Okay, she's truly, she's truly dazzling actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, and in the Mrs. Karnataka uh, competition as well you had a subtitle yes. you won? I won uh, the subtitle of Mrs. Intellectual. Mrs. Intellectual. Mrs. India Karnataka, Mrs. Intellectual. Which is, I think, uh, I, I personally love the title uh, far more because. Uh, beauty should always be associated with brains. True, and, uh, true, so if, true. Uh, you don't, uh, uh, you're not high on an intellectual quotient, then uh, you know. It's maybe it's not really worth it. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, but then, uh, you see, it's very easy to, f uh, you know, look beautiful. Uh, some people are just beautiful. But then, how do you feel beautiful? Is there something f uh, that applies to you that makes you feel beautiful? I feel uh, beauty is. Uh, just not an attractive face. Uh, it is probably a heart which is uh, uh, full of qualities like uh, compassion, humility, uh, you know, a lot of uh, positive attitude. Uh, uh, these kind of things, uh, when a person has in their heart, I think it just radiates uh, out of their heart and an aura which emits positivity and love. So basically, uh, loving and caring and forgiving and you know all these qualities make a heart a person look even more beautiful and uh, for me uh, I don't know I, I'm just I think I believed in myself and uh, I've always had this attitude uh, that never say die and uh, I have always wanted to uh, push myself to challenges and uh, that's what I did here right uh, so yeah I <laughs> gave myself uh, uh, the inner boost and strength and I said uh, yes I, I think I'm worth it and I should 
go and try and do this. So very proud you are <laughs> to have that crown, isn't it? You it should. It shows. Actually. I mean, the way you're speaking about it, there's so much of pride. I I really like that. But then, uh, how did the family take it? I mean, did they, you know, the, you know, throughout? It's it's not a joke to be participating in a modeling field and then go on to win Mrs. Karnataka uh, without the support of family and somewhere. Uh, did your child as well have an inspiration, uh, you know, for you to do something? Uh, Arfa, I basically belong to an orthodox middle class family mm. uh, where glamour is far from uh, sp being spoken about. So for me to uh, get into this field itself was a big challenge mm. to convince people that, um, uh, you know, I, I want to be a model, you know, post motherhood because Probably, you know how an orthodox like uh, middle class expression. family works. <laughs> it's like now, I mean, you know, this is something which a girl does when she is like in her early 20s or when she's unmarried. And uh, you think you want to do this now? And is it going to be accepted uh, by people? Um, I, so I had to do a lot of convincing and mm -hmm. it wasn't easy. There was a mixed response, uh, but I had to prove myself. See, generally, uh, a modeling repertoire is such that uh, people think uh, modeling involves a more majority of uh, skin show and, uh, right. you know, uh, so which a uh, middle class community is not very open to and acceptable. So I said, okay, I'm not going to be doing that. I'm not going to be a typical model. Uh, I would still want to be a model looking uh, graceful with dignity. And uh, I want to prove to you that it is just not about skin show. So that's why predominantly I chose to model for saris and ethnic wear. Uh, and I, I don't do uh, modeling probably for all kinds of clothes. Right. So I stick to this. So I get the feel, I get the uh, satisfaction of being a model. And I'm also, uh, you know, presenting a dignified image as a model because uh, at the end of the day, I'm somebody's wife and I'm a mother. So, you know, I have to maintain that dignity. So. True. That way, I yeah, kind of satisfied uh, uh, every aspect. Uh, but I'm sure they were proud when you won. It was yeah, all worth it. <laughs> and definitely, yes, my husband was very supportive in all this. Uh, he believed in me. He said, OK, as long as you know what you're doing, go ahead. Uh, it should not affect the dignity of the house. And uh, it should not uh, you know, hamper the upbringing of the child. So uh, still, my uh, priority is my uh, upbringing of my child. And uh, probably that's the reason I haven't uh, taken on too much work. I get a lot of acting offers. Uh, so, but I think right now I'm not ready for acting. Uh, it takes away a lot of time from you. And uh, even now, uh, as Mrs. Uh, Karnataka, I uh, go out for a lot of events, uh, like uh, judging uh, fashion shows. And uh, I've inaugurated so many uh, places, showrooms and stuff. And uh, they call you for inspirational talk. And so I keep myself busy that way. So, uh, you know, I don't want to get into acting right now and keep myself more busy because that takes away even that little time from my house and the family. So uh, that's how I kind of balance uh, my work mm -hmm. into the house. You're very consciously uh, drawing boundaries. Yes, yes, right. Yes. I see, I'm not in a stage of life where uh, I have to do this for a living. Yeah. I'm here because of my passion and pure passion. And uh, so this is giving me uh, what I want right now. And yes, probably s sometime few years down the line might be acting might be on the agenda. Yeah. So and does your child realize the enormity of what you've done? I mean, no, uh, that <laughs> <laughs> no. At home, uh, <laughs> no, at home, I'm this uh, <laughs> very regular, typical mom. <laughs> regular mom. Oh my God, where are my clothes? My husband's why my clothes are not ironed. I'm packing. I still cook myself at home because I don't want to have a cook and stuff. I, st I love cooking, so I'm, I keep myself busy that way. So when I'm not doing anything, I'm at home being a full-time mom and a typical mom. Wow, you're beautifully balancing it. Yes, that's, right. that's my idea, actually. You know, Shubha, I'm dying to ask you, what was going on in your mind when the crown was being placed on your head? Please, I want to know this. <laughs> I was so nervous. I, uh, you know, usually they start off with all the subtitles. Right. And then uh, they start off with uh, the runners up and uh, you know finally go to the winner. First runner up is over, second runner up is over. And I just kept saying Om Sai Ram, Om Sai Ram in their <laughs> mind and uh, they just call out my name. It was so euphoric. I <laughs> probably it was, I was just short of tears, but uh, it, it was a great sense of achievement. I, 
instantly thanked uh, my lord okay. and uh, yeah just went on with the flow and uh, probably if you see the footage of that video i had this immense sense of pride and satisfaction <laughs> when i <laughs> was been uh, right and it must have stayed right that those words and it must have just stayed in your memory for a life right what are the characteristics of a beauty queen does it keep changing or is it just the same throughout how does it work so here we are talking about a mrs beauty queen mm. so which is far more different than the miss uh, yeah. india and stuff so uh, when it comes to mrs i think she is basically uh, has to be a woman of substance uh, a woman who has uh, gone through a lot of uh, phases of life which has taught her uh, uh, all about pain all about happiness uh, all about sacrifice because she's come till a stage where she is uh, now a mother she's a, a wife she is uh, a daughter in law she has so many roles to play but that is not the case when you are a miss beauty queen so the responsibility and the maturity has increased tenfold so you're a representation of a woman who is an embodiment of uh, patience sacrifice strength uh, courage that is at least to come out in that age and uh, uh, say even i'm uh, going to prove you that you know i'm no less than any miss uh, india or miss karnataka so be basically she should be a woman who uh, i think who is charismatic of course mm -hmm. Uh, she has to be presentable. She has to be uh, uh, bold, and uh, the personality should be striking. Mm. Uh, she should uh, probably have this uh, uh, sense of uh, helping, sense of uh, being of use to the society. Now you start looking at broader perspectives, like how you can be of use to the society with your title. It's just not for yourself. You would want to have a heart which goes out for social causes too. So yeah, so basically, I think she should be an embodiment of all these qualities. So that's uh, the responsibility that comes with the crown. Yeah, it's even uh, I think as a in a Miss uh, India pageant or whatever, th th that is there. But what sets uh, the woman apart is uh, probably the maturity oh. and what she has gone through in life. Right. Uh, nobody better than you to ask. You know, how important is it for a woman to have an identity? of herself post marriage post motherhood somewhere down the line you lose your identity that's what happens in our society so uh, your take on that see here i would be referring to middle class uh, homemaker uh, whose identity after wedding is only as a mrs somebody and a mother of somebody so her own life is now this uh, who is she as an individual is forgotten actually by herself mm -hmm. It is her mistake also probably that she didn't give importance to creating her own identity. She's been recognized as a Mrs. Somebody and a mother of somebody. So uh, in the long run, I think it's very important for her to create an identity of her own because this uh, identity is going to give her an immense sense of uh, achievement, satisfaction. Uh, you know, it, it's going to improve her all-round personality to that extent that uh, that happiness probably uh, she would uh, radiate it better in looking after uh, the family right. so once she creates an identity for herself uh, she is respected more actually mm -hmm. and uh, she proves to the world that uh, she has an identity for her own uh, and she also can be a good uh, homemaker and keep both in balance so uh, that's a plus uh, situation for her right right so i think it's very important for every woman to create an identity uh, it need not be that uh, you know uh, it, she has to be working in a regular full-time job. It can be anything that she has always been passionate about, anything she has dreamt of achieving. But uh, probably marriage and motherhood uh, uh, gave a backseat to those dreams. Mm -hmm. I think uh, women need to uh, rediscover themselves right. uh, when you're at a stage where uh, you're thinking that okay, is this all my life all about? Uh, rediscover your passions and uh, come out and challenge yourself to do what you want to do it's not going to be easy uh, <laughs> but yes you need to push yourself and uh, work a lot more uh, right. and uh, do something for yourself and i think love yourself yeah uh, she's got important. that element in her where you know she likes to challenge herself she's like i can do it um, <laughs> let's give it a try it happens it happens doesn't doesn't right so that element is very important for anyone who's participating in a competition
It is now typically for pageants like ours because now you're uh, at a stage of life where uh, most women don't even think that this is possible. Yes. Looking glamorous, looking good is a lot of hard work because pregnancies have uh, changed your body, changed your personality and uh, you need to get yourself back into a uh, attractive personality and uh, that all takes a lot of effort so right. but is it paying off i think you get a lot of attention from uh, you know the opposite uh, gender yeah. uh, how do you <laughs> handle it <laughs> i mean i don't no, know it's not paying <laughs> off because of male attention uh, is definitely a part of it and uh, yes uh, probably like most uh, other women like me i do have my share uh, I do have people uh, writing out to me on Facebook, mm. uh, showering me with compliments. I'm talking about men uh, who write these love notes <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you know, we want a picture with you and uh, nice. you please talk to me once. And <laughs> I, I feel like I'm back in uh, college getting all that uh, attention and uh, it is even more <laughs> a flutter in the heart because uh, I, I'm getting all this at this age. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, of course, I enjoy it. Who doesn't enjoy attention? It's uh, women. Especially <laughs> when women. it is from the opposite sex. So, <laughs> <laughs> it keeps me going. <laughs> but does your husband uh, really like it? I mean, uh, he, fortunately for me, he's uh, extremely supportive. Very, uh, trust me, like. Uh, I guess he just made a mental note when he sent you for the pageant. It's like, okay, she's going to get a lot of attention. Yeah, I, I know. A lot it. of people tell him, you know, now that your wife is, you know, like a <laughs> celeb and you know how many guys are hitting on her, and he's like, yeah, good for them. <laughs> Well, I have so it, uh, it really oh helps to have a husband like that who, you know, trusts you so much. And I keep it there, you know, I don't take it too much further. So I just say a thank you and I get messages. And sometimes when it gets irritating, it does get irritating. People really pester you and get, you know, mm. try to cross that line. So that's when uh, I have to handle it with tact. Right, right. On a serious note, you have a responsibility towards Karnataka and Kannada. Uh, uh, what, are, what are your thoughts on that? Being a beauty ambassador of Karnataka, I think the foremost uh, uh, thing of importance is uh, preserving and uh, uh, s uh, you know our culture today, Karnataka's culture is uh, I feel somewhere uh, going down in the sense, uh, especially Bangalore has become so cosmopolitan. We have an influx of people from all over uh, India yes. coming in and uh, Kannada itself is losing so much uh, of importance in Karnataka. This is actually what I feel. Uh, so I think uh, I would like to you know, work with causes which uh, promote Kannada culture and uh, you know uh, bring it on a national platform and say yes, Karnataka still exists. The beautiful cultural heritage of Karnataka is still big and we Kannadigas are still uh, large in number and we will not let our culture diminish. Right. So, uh, Any such programs or anything happening on that those lines? I do get some kind of events where uh, uh, you know they talk about promoting Kannada culture and I mm -hmm. go there and I give my thoughts on that and anything that is there I'm still open to uh, joining hands with any such uh, activities which happen. So, uh, Another example is uh, the Kannada film industry. Mm. I mean, what's happening to the Kannada film industry? There are uh, no uh, takers really. How many of us in Karnataka watch Kannada films? It is. I don't think the number Very is great. Numbers, Very yeah. few numbers. Maybe only the uh, mass crowd. Typically, the mass crowd. Uh, well, you can say that people blame the quality of Kannada cinema not being up to the mark, so they turn on to Hindi and uh, Tamil because yes. they are of greater quality. But uh, if people like us who are Typical Namma Bengalurians don't support uh, uh, Kannada and the Kannada movies. How is it going to grow? So when you ha don't have audiences like us, we're talking about the class audience. Uh, so of course, I think Kannada industry is coming of age. Now you do see very uh, meaningful Kannada cinemas, but uh, uh, it has to uh, grow to a lot more extent. And uh, I, I see that the uh, theatres are uh, allotted to Kannada cinema is a uh, lot more lesser than the theatres allotted to the mm -hmm. other languages. So we, when you start giving importance to allotting more theatres for our own uh, language cinema, then that helps uh, the Karnataka film industry to grow. Uh, we have a so responsibility as well. Yeah, as every Kannadiga should uh, 
take responsibility in uh, promoting uh, Kannada this way too. So, uh, any favorite Kannada stars you have? Sudeep. Mm -hmm. Sudeep is uh, extremely uh, classy, one of the classiest actors we have today and uh, his talent is uh, well known. He's made a mark for himself everywhere. Uh, the other person I would say, uh, JK, that's uh, Karthik Jairam. He's uh, extremely uh, good looking, he's hot. <laughs> and uh, he's done pretty well for himself. I mean, he's doing pretty well for himself. He's talented too. And uh, but I would I think he needs a lot more avenues to mm. showcase his uh, right. talent here in the Kannada industry. Uh, then there is I think Naveen Krishna and uh, who is also extremely talented. Uh, there are a lot more people like this who are uh, very talented but lack the platform to showcase their talents. Right. So I hope the industry you know uh, brings out such talents more. There is some dearth of probably good scripting or uh, yeah, good script. somewhere there's something The amiss. budget I think is uh, also a concern. Mm. So we have to, <laughs> they have to work on uh, doing all this and uh, promote the yeah. Canada cinema tour. So in the future, if you get an opportunity to star as an actress, uh, what would you give weightage for? Uh, would you give more weightage for the script or uh, the star cast or the, you know, the director? Uh, like I said, I'm not really ready for acting right now. So if it would mean that it takes some years down the line, um, I would probably not be uh, in the age to play a hero in, for in any movie. So it'll have to be character roles. Uh, of course, then the role would matter. The uh, character strength would matter. And uh, yeah, it basically the weightage would be to the character. So I can't... Uh, decide on the star cast and stuff since I'm not going to be. <laughs>
uh, this is a part of my uh, yoga group for the yoga classes where I go to mm -hmm. under the guidance of my uh, yoga guru. So I'm uh, part of those kind of activities too and uh, all that gives me an uh, immense sense of satisfaction. Yeah. So uh, humanitarian responsibility yeah. is also a part of your life, yeah. right, great. What were the changes, uh, you know, before you won the crown and after you won the crown? How has the routine changed for you? Definitely life has changed, I think, uh, tenfold. Uh, now I'm more like a public figure. Uh, earlier nobody knew who Shubha was <laughs> <laughs> because uh, I was confined to home and stuff. So yes, the kind of respect this title has uh, got me is immense. And uh, you know, uh, I'm known in the social circles of Bangalore now. Uh, you can call me a socialite, fashionista, whatever. Uh, so yeah, the name uh, and the popularity it's given me is uh, something really uh, pleasurable. Brilliant, brilliant. So uh, what are the future plans going forward? Uh, like I said, maybe uh, I might take up acting, not sure. Um, but again, something uh, uh, involved with uh, animal welfare mm -hmm. because uh, I love animals, especially dogs, and I've always wanted to do something for animal welfare. Like, you know, I always wanted to join uh, groups like Cupa or PETA or uh, organizations oh. like that. So once uh, my daughter is a little bigger and I have a lot more time, I definitely would want to uh, join hands uh, in the world of animal welfare and do something. And uh, of course, I would like to do something in for promoting uh, yoga and Ayurveda. Mm -hmm. Because okay. I think uh, yoga and Ayurveda are uh, uh, the cultural gifts or the heritage gifts which India gave to the world. And uh, now we see that the Westerners are uh, taking that a lot more higher and practicing this form much more than we Indians do. So uh, probably I would want to do some work uh, which can promote yoga and Ayurveda uh, to a larger degree and uh, promote it as a way of a healthy lifestyle. Fantastic, okay. So uh, in the middle of all this, I'm sure there are some stressful moments for you while you're trying to balance your home and work. Uh, what do you do to de-stress and uh, uh, what are your eating habits like? <laughs> I mean, it, it takes a lot to even maintain right now. It is, it is. I, I try a lot. <laughs> you see, when, I mean, once you post 35, uh, there's a lot more effort you need to put in to take care of your body because the metabolism is slowing down slowly. Uh, I have to uh, make it a point that I exercise. And like I said, uh, yoga is my regular mm. practice. Uh, it keeps me fit. Meditation is my regular practice. So. Uh, on a mental level and a physical level, it keeps me uh, fit and going. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, uh, listening to music and uh, dancing, I love to dance. So. Oh, you love to dance? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> have you uh, learned to dance? Uh, no, I've not had a formal training, but uh, I, people say that I dance well, oh, so nice. whenever I get a chance with my friends, I do okay. dance and that really takes Based all my stress away. Uh, Shubha, I'm sure a lot of women uh, must have come to you, walked up to you and said that uh, you're an inspirer. Uh, they must have uh, written to you, in fact. You know, you're so active on the social media. Uh, have you had such examples? Uh, yes, uh, Arfa. In fact, I had a lot of women initially when I won the crown writing to me saying uh, I'm such an inspiration. And I would always wonder uh, what have I achieved that much that uh, people are finding me an inspiration. Uh, because uh, even till today, I think I'm just a drop in the ocean of women achievers. I have a lot more to go and uh, in the actual sense of achievement. Uh, but then uh, somebody told me that uh, inspiration is, uh, you know, inspiration. It, is, it can be big, it can be small. Uh, so even in some small way, if I have uh, inspired somebody, a change in thought, a change in attitude, and that's, I have inspired them. So. I accepted that uh, point with grace and uh, yeah, so what uh, probably uh, women find inspiring in me is that I set out to do this at a stage in life where most women thought that their life is probably all over. Uh, we, you know, it is just going to be confined to home and uh, looking after uh, kids and family and uh, domestic issues is, is all is life all about now. Yeah. So, uh, so coming from uh, that age where uh, it requires a lot more effort and a lot more courage to uh, come out uh, doing what I'm doing uh, is probably what uh, women find inspirational. Yeah. 
Uh, I think it is. Even I have a lot to learn from you. Uh, you know, uh, at a stage when you totally uh, got so involved with your day-to-day -day life. Yeah, you know. most women uh, do that, right? I mean, uh, if you're not working, you're just at home. You uh, even stop uh, looking at yourself properly in the mirror. So you're, all you're thinking is, what do I cook today? Uh, you know, what? Where do I buy these groceries? How so do true, I pay the so bill? True. And your life is just revolving around uh, mundane domestic yeah. chores <laughs> that you forget to have a life of your own. So. Yeah. You have to reinvent yourself, yeah. yeah, and like experience your life. Brilliant. What is your, uh, you know, advice to women out there? Um, yeah, so my advice to women is that uh, always dream big. Uh, be, uh, you know, uh, if, you, if you're always passionate about doing something, uh, if these passions took a back seat because uh, you got married and because you had kids, uh, don't let these passions just uh, be buried deep in your heart. Uh, pull them out, uh, yeah, rediscover yourself and uh, give it a chance uh, to come out and it can be anything small. Uh, it need not be, uh, everybody is not cut out to be a beauty queen or everybody is not cut out to, you know, do uh, corporate jobs. It could be a passion for baking, it could be passion for uh, singing, dance, uh, any small uh, aspects of life. So just cultivate that, bring it down to the next level, a uh, level where uh, you create an identity for yourself because uh, life is just uh, not about, uh, you know, domestic chores. Uh, you need to uh, grow yourself into something more uh, worthwhile and also, uh, you know, try and be of use to the society and uh, down the line that is what your purpose is in life. So I would say, uh, uh, miracles actually start to happen when you uh, give uh, that much energy to your dreams as much as you do to your fears. So come out of those fears yes. and uh, keep thinking that uh, you're worth uh, everything you want to achieve because uh, thoughts have this you know, powerful ability to manifest into reality. So you keep thinking, uh, yes, you are uh, worth it, you are strong, uh, I want to do this, I want to do this. So. I think the universe conspires to make it into a reality. I guess so, I guess so. <laughs> All right, viewers, that was Mrs. Karnataka Shubha Sri Ram for you. A beautiful, not just by her heart, not just by face, but she's got a beautiful mind and soul as well. A beauty with the brains, truly. It was such a pleasure to have you here today, Shubha. I wish you all the luck for your future endeavors. And uh, anything for our viewers? I would like to thank you, Arfa, for having me over here. I thank uh, YTV for uh, uh, giving me this opportunity to be in front of you all and sharing my thoughts. And uh, I really wish YTV a magnanimous success and uh, wish that they reach every household and become a successful uh, English lifestyle channel. Fantastic. <laughs> we, we want that. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Shubha. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. Thank you. Your channel.